you might be a survival mechanism, but I'm not threatened. Like, you know, my life is not threatened right now. So please go away or please just, I'm not going to listen to you, you know, kind of thing. Hello, Stereotype Breakers, and welcome to yet another episode of the Meaningful Conversations podcast. I am so happy that you're here because today we're going to be talking about imposter syndrome once again. I can see a lot of you are interested in the subject because, well, statistics don't lie. 70% of us experience imposter syndrome. And, you know, if you're just tuning in, you don't know, you don't have any context on what that is. Imposter syndrome is the feeling that you are a fraud, that you shouldn't be where you are right now. You don't deserve to be here. And, you know, you feel like a fraud, you're going to be found out. You're, You're scared that you will be found out. So today in particular, I want to talk about three books that I would recommend anyone with imposter syndrome. And again, let's face it, it's all of us uh, and it never really goes away. Three books that will help you combat that voice inside of your head, that will help you manage that voice of self-doubt in your head. And let's dive straight into it. The first book that I would recommend to anyone who struggles with imposter syndrome to read, to get more context on what imposter syndrome is, to get more tools and resources on how to deal and manage with the imposter syndrome, is The Imposter Cure. This book, The Imposter Cure, How to Stop Feeling Like a Fraud and Escape the Mind Trap of Imposter Syndrome, was written by Dr. Jessamy Hibbard, who is brilliant. She is a psychologist who has been diving into this topic for years now. And as someone who has imposter syndrome herself and has seen it in multiple different clients, she knows a thing or two about it. And she she basically breaks it down very, very well into how it works, why it occurs, how it gets reinforced, etc. I think that it is If you read one book about imposter syndrome, um, this is definitely a book for you. I know there are other uh, books on imposter syndrome in particular. This one has been the most impactful uh, that I have read myself. If you have any other suggestions, let me know uh, down below in the comments. But basically, this is if you read one book on imposter syndrome and how to deal with it, let this be the book because it's brilliant and it helps you. It gives you so many exercises and tools on how to deal with imposter syndrome. Book number two doesn't necessarily address the imposter syndrome directly. However, I think it is incredibly linked to imposter syndrome and I'll tell you why in a second. So book number two is Mindset, The New Psychology of Success by Dr. Carol Dweck. The reason why I think this book is incredibly powerful is because it talks about growth mindset versus fixed mindset. And as I was reading that book, I could see how fixed mindset is very much linked with perfectionism, which is also uh, a lot of the time a cause of imposter syndrome. And Honestly, when I was listening to this book, I remember thinking somebody needs to make a study about imposter syndrome and growth mindset. And I'm pretty sure that there is a correlation that has been um, identified. I need to dive deeper into this research and to, to in order to verify this. So don't quote me on this. However, I see it in my own self. I, I see it in my own behavior. And you know, even though you might think that you have growth mindset, you might have a fixed mindset in certain other areas and it's just, you know, something that you end up resorting to in stressful situations. So, and like the panic, you know, the feeling, I almost call it imposter attack. You know, whenever the imposter syndrome wave comes over you, like that voice in your head, the self-doubt, the fixed mindset, at least that's how I experience it, just comes right at you. And this book not only break, breaks it down and helps you see how you might have growth mindset when it comes to certain areas of your life, let's say your mathematical skills or um, your coding skills or your communication skills, your presentation skills, all of those things. But you might have a fixed mindset when it comes to your artistic skills, your musical skills, because you might think that that's either an innate talent that you're born with or 
you know, you don't have it. So it's a very good book for anyone who struggles with imposter syndrome, just so that you have uh, the background, you are able to recognize that fixed mindset and how it comes about in your head and you have the tools in order to deal with it, to shut it down or to, you know, talk back at it and be like, no, I don't, I don't listen to you. You, I know you will always be at the back of my head. However, this is how I know you're not important. This is how I know you don't mean well for my life. I know that you, you might be a survival mechanism, but I'm not threatened. Like, you know, my life is not threatened right now. So please go away or please just, I'm not going to listen to you, you know, kind of thing. And finally, book number three is Brave Not Perfect by Reshma Sujani. I, I adore this book. Um, I know she has written another book where she kind of criticized some of the, um, some of the things that she said that they were, you know, a little bit too lean in kind of rhetoric. However, I think it's a brilliant book in terms of looking at how we approach life and specifically we as women, right? Men do this too, but we as women, a lot of the times approach life from this need to be perfect. So Reshma breaks it down into how boys are brought up to be adventurous and experiment and do things and be brave and girls uh, and, you know, like break their skateboards and, you know, have scuffled elbows, knees and get dirty and climb trees while girls are brought up to be these perfect idyllic images who always have their bow on correctly and their hairs are done and their dress is not messy, doesn't have holes in them. Um, and you know, they behave well, they're nice to everyone, they're likable. And so we kind of have this mental model uh, from the very early age that we need to be perfect and uh, how those two things kind of contrast each other. And because of that, we feel almost paralyzed a lot of the times out of the fear of not being perfect. Again, going back to fixed mindset, we are paralyzed because we're afraid that we will prove the world by failing that we're not perfect. We will prove ourselves, we'll prove it to our parents, to our loved ones, to our high school teacher that we're not perfect. However, she tells you how to re structure, reshift your mindset on how can we be brave and almost liberates you to be more brave and not perfect. So I think that's a wonderful book. Also, if you struggle with imposter syndrome, it could be incredibly powerful for you because it helps you to be brave and show up as the imperfect self. Finally, a bonus book that I did not tell you about before, but I just got it. I have not read it myself, so I didn't want to mention it before. However, I'm very excited to dig into it. And I just got it on Audible today when doing research for this video and looking through all of the books. And this one stood out to me in particular because it talks about imperfections. So the book is called The Gifts of Imperfections, and it's a 10th anniversary edition, which is crazy. The book is by Brene Brown, who many of you may know already from for her other work, but here it is. Here it is. I'm so excited to dig into this book because I know this is going to be incredibly powerful because it reframes the way we look at our imperfections from, you know, flaws that we need to hide and change into gifts, which is so incredibly powerful. So this is a bonus book that if you are on this journey and you want to tackle this aspect of your imposter syndrome first, I think this could be a good one. Again, I have not read it, so I don't know anything about it, but knowing a thing or two about Brene Brown's work, I will probably love it. So let me know in the comments what you thought about this video, if you've read any of these books, and you know what aspects of imposter syndrome do you struggle with the most? Do, what aspects do you find the most challenging? What situations um, does it come about? I'm super curious because I feel like we're all experiencing it from different perspectives. At the same time, we also experience it all in very similar patterns. So let's see if your patterns match my patterns. 
And I will tell you more about some of the ways in which I talk myself out of imposter attacks, as I call them, in a later episode. So make sure you're subscribed to this podcast, whether on YouTube or a podcasting platform of your choice, because we publish a lot of content, you know, at least once a week. This is a this is a second episode this week, so or the first episode out of two, whatever. This is going to be, there's going to be a lot of good content coming your way. So make sure you subscribe here and all of the other platforms. And you can also find us on other social media platforms as Stereotype Breakers on most of them or Stereotype Breakers on Twitter. Although if you type in Stereotype Breakers, I'm sure it will come up. So yes, thank you so much for being here. I hope you've enjoyed this episode and also that you have taken away some of the books Um to read, basically that you have added them to your reading list. And it would be wonderful to hear your opinion on these books once you do read them. I hope you have a wonderful time of the day you're currently experiencing. Bye.